Hey everyone, welcome to this video all about geometric operations, which is a type of measurement and data question. In this video, we're going to focus on the concept of volume. So let's begin by reading this short description on what volume questions can typically involve. Volume is the amount of space an object or liquid occupies or it encloses. Volume questions will usually center on prisms or pyramids. Prisms are shapes with two base faces which are joined by rectangles and pyramids have one base shape that meets at an apex. We are told the volume of a pyramid and prism given in these two shapes here. It also says that we need to be aware of volumes of prisms and pyramids as well as areas of basic 2D shapes. Okay, so volume is essentially just how much space an object occupies. And we can see it's going to slightly vary depending on what kind of shape it is, whether that's a prism or a pyramid. Now, prisms are kind of like the default kind of formula because, well, for prisms, we can figure out the volume of any prism by using the formula here. By figuring out the area of the base shape, which in this case is a rectangle, and multiplying that by the height will then give you the entire volume of the prism. Now, if you take a look at a pyramid, what it essentially is, is in the prism, if we try to get a pyramid inside that same prism, what you'll notice is that the volume it occupies is exactly just one third of the initial prism, which is why the formula looks to be exactly the same as the one for the prism, but it's got the multiplied by one third tacked on at the very end. So that's kind of one way to remember the formulas for both prisms and pyramids without having to do too much memorization. Just understanding that pyramids are one third of the initial pyramid, sorry, of the initial prism gives you an idea of what the formula is. Now, one other thing to make note of would be the fact that volume is essentially a cubic unit. And that's the reason why is also kind of clear. We've got a three dimensional object. And so we've got three different dimensions. We've got, we've got our width, we've got our length, and we've got our height. So each of these contribute one unit each in their dimension. So multiplying three of these, which you do for to figure out the volume. So multiplying the width, length and height dedicates three of these units. So we end up with the cubic unit. So always make sure that your units are appropriate. Remember that volume only has, sorry, not volume, area only has two dimensions. So it only has a square unit rather than a cubic unit. So don't get these two mixed up. Sometimes they'll try to trick you by putting the correct number for the answer, but, but having the incorrect unit at the end. So it's not the correct answer option that they're looking for. Now, the other thing is that because of finding the volume of a shape is so heavily dependent on finding the area of the base shape, that means that knowing 2D shapes quite confidently is going to be quite helpful when we figure out the volume of these more complex shapes. So that means knowing the area of your square, your rectangle, your circles, and triangles are all going to be quite valuable for tackling volume related questions. So let's quickly go through the area of some common shapes. We've got uh, the square or the rectangle, which is basically the exact same where you've got the, the length and the width and you multiply them together. And in the case of the square, those happen to be the same length. So you end up with just length squared as the formula for a for that. And that's just because the square is a type of a rectangle. For the other common shapes, we've got things like the triangle. And for the triangle, if you know the base and you know the height, then you can figure out the area, which is half times base times height. Lastly, for the circle, 
if we know the length of the diameter or the length of the radius, we can figure out the area as pi r squared. And manipulating these three different base shapes will allow us to basically figure out the area of most composite shapes or any difficult shape that we may encounter in the future. So bearing that in mind, uh, one more thing that we might just briefly mention is that the uh, pyramids are what have what are what is called an apex and that is just a fancy name for a point where all the sides actually converge into that single point and we can see that it's different for for example a corner where uh, it's actually missing one of the sides converging into that one point so that would be the difference between an apex and a corner and we can see that prisms don't actually have an apex that is a unique quality of a pyramid now that kind of is the discussion to do with volume. Let's see if we can apply the knowledge by tackling this example question. Pilar has used 28 cubic bricks to build the structure below. We're told that each brick has a side length of two centimeters. He's built the structure so that there was a base. How much concrete can he pour into the structure? Okay, so we need to figure out the volume of the hole that is found within the structure to find out how much concrete can fit into that hole. So the fact that they, this person has used 28 cubic bricks is going to be quite helpful in figuring that out. So let's count how many cubes that were used in this shape. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 bricks make up the top of the cube and it looks like there is another 12 on the bottom as a layer as well. But the thing is if we actually add up 12 and 12 we get 24 when Pilar has clearly used 28 bricks. So we can assume what that means is that there's actually four bricks consisting of the bottom layer here. So if we um, took a look at the structure it would kind of look like this as a cross section. So there is actually a bottom layer here. And those would be where the missing four shapes are, sorry, the four cubes are. So it's very important to read the question thoroughly because if you just assume that the structure or the cross section looks like this without that bottom layer, then you would get a very different volume of concrete that you can pour in since the amount that you can fit the concrete has changed. So bearing that in mind, we now know what the structure looks like. Since there were these cubic bricks that were being used, we know we can also find the volume of each of these cubic bricks. Sorry, that doesn't really look like a cube, so let's draw it out again into this cube and we're told that each side has two centimeter dimensions so that means the volume of a cube remember is going to be figuring out the area if you don't know um, the area of the base shape multiplied by the height and the base shape is a square so that's just going to be two squared multiplied by the height which is also two giving us two cubed and that is equal to eight centimeters cubed again paying attention to the units so knowing the volume of the single cube would then allow us to figure out what the dimensions of the hole he's made with the cubic bricks would be so again knowing that there is this uh, bottom layer in making up this structure we can see that the dimensions of the hull let's just get rid of these dots so it's clear it's going to have this two centimeter depth it's going to be composed of two of these squares each of them being two centimeters each so this length will be four centimeters and since it is a cube sized hole so will the width of the dimension will be also four so that allows us to figure out the volume of the hole for the concrete and that would be two times four times four uh, giving us 32 centimeters cubed of concrete. Now, taking a look at the answer options, we can see that it's in different units to the volume of concrete we actually just calculated. So to do that, we actually need to do a unit conversion. 
To do that, we need to know what uh, centimeter cubed is equal to in volume. And thankfully, it's quite an easy conversion. One centimeter cubed is also equal to one milliliter cubed. And even though this is the case for water, we can assume it's going to be the exact same for concrete since the question didn't actually specify if the volume of concrete is slightly different to the volume of water, which you can expect in real life, but for the sake of this mathematics question, we can make that assumption. So whenever you see a question that wants you to convert centimeters cubed to milliliters, always just use this um, conversion. So thankfully it looks like we figured out the answer with minimal uh, calculations to do. It's just going to be 32 milliliters or answer option A. Okay, so through this question, we saw how knowing the formula for the volume of a prism was quite handy in figuring out the correct answer. And we also saw how important it was to pay attention to the diagram as well as the information in the question that allowed us to prevent any mistakes from occurring when we were breaking the question down to figure out the answer. Those would be the main techniques that you hopefully would utilize in your future volume related questions. So I hope that was of some help to you. Thank you everyone so much for listening.